Dennis here with ETRV. In this RV remodel video, I'm gonna be installing the Max Air 2 roof vent cover and 360 siphon vent caps. I'm installing the Max Air 2 vent cover on the roof above the older Fantastic fan we have that's installed inside of our bathroom. The way the manufacturer actually gives you instructions to install it, which is drilling holes through the sides of the vent fan housing on the roof. But the problem is, if you have an older unit like ours, then you have to pull the shroud that actually finishes the inside of the fan down so you can gain access to the back of what you're supposed to be drilling to on the roof. This is a little tidbit that I noticed from another video that I haven't seen anyone else explain in any other installation videos because a lot of the new ones just have the correct hardware. This one's a little more complicated, <laughs> but it's actually not that bad. So the first thing we're gonna do is raise the vent cover on the fan itself up just slightly. Then we actually have to take the actuator handle that raises and lowers the cover off to be able to get the shroud down. So there's a Phillips head screw inside of the handle. You have to grab and hold onto the handle firmly so you can then back the Phillips head screw out. So now that we have the open close handle out of the way, it's pretty easy after that. There's only four more screws that hold the shroud on and then it just kind of hangs here from the 12 volt wires once you pull it down. But then once that's out of the way, we should have easy access to be able to install the Max Air 2 hardware to the outside of the fan shroud on the roof way easier. Now we're gonna place the vent cover on top of the fan. Just kind of make sure that it's aligned. Now that we know exactly where we want to place the mounting brackets, I'm going to mark on the side of the fan housing where I want to drill the hole for the screws to go through. Here goes nothing. That looks good. Now I gotta go back down into the bathroom so I can raise the vent cover all the way up. That way I can get my hands inside to be able to tighten down the mounting hardware screws. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm also going to go ahead and get the fan out of the way. It's just four more screws and the whole mounting bracket for the fan comes out of the vent housing. So then I'll have full access to be able to get my hands inside to mount the brackets for the Max Air vent cover. All right. So the flat part goes up against the fan housing, then the screw goes through that, then the flat washer on the inside of the fan, a crush washer, then the nut securing it all. So that's the order. Now I'm just going to reinstall the fan back into the housing. Now the only decision to make is which way do I want it to flop open for service. And I think I'm going to have it open up this way. Now we're going to use these little guys on one side. 
which are lock nuts and these two long bolts and that will hold one side secure and then these cotter pins go on the other side so you can actually pop them off and open the vent cover if you need to service your fan. So that's it for the install of the Max Air 2 vent fan cover. Our install was a little more involved than some of the newer RVs are going to be because a lot of the newer RVs are coming with the fantastic fans with the easy clip hardware already installed in the fan housing. So you're not going to have to drill anything. You literally just line the vent cover up, send the bolts and the cotter pins through and you're done. We went through e-trailer for the purchase of the Max Air Vent and the 360 siphon vent covers that we're installing today because e-trailer offers the full manufacturer warranty on all of the RV products that they sell through their website. And we've had good luck with e-trailer before when we had to order suspension components for our fifth wheel and their shipping is lightning fast their customer service literally can't be beat. So we have links to everything that we're installing today down in the description of the video. So click show more, scroll down a bit and you'll see those links for you there if you wanna install any of these things on your RV. Let's get down to installing the 360 siphon vent on our black and gray water vent stacks. So RV wastewater holding tanks naturally have a positive atmospheric pressure meaning anytime the wind blows over a conventional vent cap that's on top of the roof, the fresh air is gonna be forced down into the wastewater holding tanks. And then if there's any exposed vents, like if you're driving down the road and someone flushes the toilet, the sewer smells and vapors are gonna be pushed out of that open space and into the living space of your RV. The difference here is the 360 vent cap uses a Venturi design, which actually pulls, it creates a negative pressure and pulls those odors and nasty vapors up and out of the vent stack on top of the roof. That way you get zero smells inside of the RV. Now we have a little bit of experience with odors inside of the RV because we traveled around for two years inside of our toy hauler that had a washer dryer combo hooked up to a waterless P-trap inside of the garage. Now, every time we moved, we would smell odors from the gray tank. And while that's not a sewery smell, it still wasn't pleasant. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. It didn't matter if we dumped the tanks before we left the site or not, we still got odors inside of the RV. And that was because of the positive pressure from when we were moving from campsite to campsite the airflow was pushing into the gray tank in the kitchen and then pushing those vapors up through the dry p-trap and into the garage area so i'm really looking forward to be able to using these 360 siphon vent caps that way we never get any more smells inside of our rv again so this install is really straightforward we have a two inch diameter vent stack pipe which is going to allow me to use adhesive to actually glue the 360 siphon vent directly to the pipe. Otherwise, there's a little funnel that will adapt the vent cover to a smaller inside diameter vent stack pipe if you have it like an inch and a quarter. But luckily, I'm not gonna need to do any of that. All I gotta do is put the base and the cover together, measure to the bottom of the base. Now I'm gonna take a pencil and put a cut line around the actual vent stack pipe and then use my Dremel multi-tool to zip off the excess, clean that up a little bit, and then just glue it all together. Got my butyl tape on the bottom of the base covering all the screw holes. Now I'm just gonna line this up center with the vent stack pipe. There we go. Now that we got the base secure, I'm gonna cover the screw heads, then put a thick bead all the way around the base of the roof vent. Screw 
Now all it's left to do is use some adhesive to secure the roof vent cover over the pipe and base. The manufacturer suggests using 3M 5200 marine sealant. I'm actually gonna go with the Loctite equivalent only because it's semi-permanent. And we know we're gonna do more roof repairs later. And if I can, I'm gonna to wanna to salvage this roof cap instead of having to break it off and then reinstall a new one. So I'm gonna lay a thin bead of sealant around the top of the vent cover base. Then I'm also gonna lay a thin bead of sealant around the top of the vent stack pipe. Now we got the sealant on, the only thing left to do is to slap the cover on top. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this install video today. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button down below. While you're there, hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell next to it. That way you get alerted every time we drop a new video on YouTube. And until then, I'll see you next week. That was just by far the hardest part about this whole installation was getting the, <laughs> the bolt through the fan and the bracket. <laughs> Super straightforward uh, install. If you're not trying to film it, it'll take you maybe a half an hour. If you're trying to film it, it's gonna take you all afternoon. <laughs>